Um, so when I say fixed assets, there are basically two components to it. One is the fixed asset information that gets stored in the source system. In our case, Oracle eBusiness Suite, or it could be any other uh, ERP system that the company is using. And the fixed asset analytics that we have built, which is the business intelligence tool that sits on the fixed assets and helps customers analyze their fixed asset information. My name is uh, Pawan Nanjundaya. I'm a principal consultant in KPA Partners. My today's session was titled Fixed Asset Analytics for Oracle BI and Oracle eBusiness Suite. During my session today, we talked about some common business problems and common business requirements that any customer using assets in their company would have. And we saw how our reports and dashboards can help customers answer these questions. Uh, we're going to talk about what are fixed assets, what are fixed asset analytics. So the presentation is going to be in two folds. First, I'll walk you through the demo, uh, the presentation that I've prepared. It gives you an overview of the product fixed asset analytics that we're talking about. In the latter half, I'll give you a demo of the reports and dashboards that we've built. So the first question is, what are fixed assets? Typically, our, uh, the technical definition of fixed asset is an asset which is a long-term asset and a tangible asset. We are talking about fixed asset as a source system, that is, in case of an Oracle eBusiness Suite as your ERP system, this is a module which captures the complete asset information. Here's where you enter your assets, depreciate your assets, maintain your assets, and retire your assets. I'll take a real life example to explain this in a little more detail. Let's say I have a manufacturing company where I have a lot of heavy machineries or I track many different components as assets. Say I have computers, buildings, these are my assets. And let's say I've purchased a truck which I want to track as an asset. When I purchase a truck, the cost of the truck at the time of purchase could be say something like a $10,000. So that is your initial cost of the asset. As you continue to use the truck, the cost of the truck keeps going down. That is the depreciation. It's very similar to I buy a car today. The cost of the car could be 10,000 and over a period of time, the cost of the car keeps going down. That's because it's depreciating. I continue to use my truck, say, for about 10 years, and after 10 years, I decide, okay, the truck is no longer fit to be used, so I just go ahead and retire my truck. Or I say, the truck is no longer fit to be used. So this asset in my company, which I purchased for $10,000, used it for a span of time, and finally retired, is what is tracked in my fixed asset module. The life of an asset from inception till retirement. Let's take a look at the overview of fixed assets in terms of data flow. The blue boxes are the different modules in an ERP system. The, those are the modules which feed data into my fixed asset. The gray box is the actual fixed asset module which gets this information. So if you see the blue boxes, we are saying that information flows into fixed assets from payables, projects. You could key in assets manually. You could also import assets from your third party system. So these are the different sources which feed data into assets. Once data gets into fixed assets, there are various different activities that occur inside the module. That is, you maintain your assets, you depreciate your assets, you retire your asset. Just like any other subledger, all this information would finally flow to your general ledger. So fixed asset is nothing but a standard subledger module, just like an AR or an AP, where you can track your assets and perform various different activities on that. In fact, before even I get into the fixed asset analytics, I want to talk about OBIA. So this is the Oracle's business intelligence product, which comes with a pre-built analytics. Customers can use OBIA to analyze their supply chain, finance, procurement, or human resource uh, activities in the company. Now, the fixed asset analytics product that we have built sits very well integrates with Oracle uh, business intelligence product. And at the same time, it helps customers to track their fixed asset data from their source system. The next slide, which is my landscape slide, will give you a complete picture of where the product fits in and how the, any customer can relate to this product. So at the bottom, we have the Oracle eBusiness Suite. That is the ERP package that the customer is using. Now we have Oracle's business intelligence product, which is OBI. By default, it integrates very well with my um, source system, eBusiness Suite. Now, eBusiness Suite has got a module called fixed assets, just like any other module in uh, eBusiness Suite. Fixed asset is one of the module. 
And now the missing link is completed when we put in the fixed asset analytics piece. So if you look at the fixed asset analytics, it very well integrates with the other analytics in OBI given by Oracle. At the same time, it talks to the fixed asset module in Oracle eBusiness Suite and helps customers to analyze their asset information from a BI point of view. So the picture looks complete because you have a BI tool and you have a source system where asset information can be tracked from an OLTP point of view as well from a BI point of view. Any customer who's using an asset tracking system would agree with me when I say additions, adjustments, retirements. So these are activities that occur day in and day out in their company. So customers would like to understand how do I better manage this or how do I increase the efficiency of my asset management in my company? So our product has got reports and dashboards pre-built, which helps you understand here's the total dollar value of additions you've made or here's the unit retirements that you've made. Let me go back to the truck example that I was giving. I purchase a truck today, I use it for 10 years. Let's say somewhere between fourth and fifth year, I want to understand what was the cost of the truck or what were the different activities that occurred on the truck. Can I really go back at a point in time in history and understand or get this information? Yes. We are, our product has got the snapshotted information where you can go at a point in time in history to understand, can I, can I understand all the different activities that occurred on my asset at any given point in time? It really helps you to understand the way you're depreciating your assets or the way you're maintaining assets in your company. So it's not just the top executives who can relate to this product or start using the product. It's the end, end uh, you know, the business users who use the product day in and day out, the fixed asset managers and the top executives. So the metrics that we've built are designed so that everybody in the company can use the product. Ad hoc capabilities is probably the most uh, favorite term for a business user because what we've seen and what really happens in, uh, in a real life scenario is when we give a pre-built dashboard or a report, users are very happy with that. But at the same time, they would like to build their own report. They say, okay, I like this, this, this column along with this metric because that is the analysis that I'm gonna do today. If that is what you're looking for, the product is robust enough to support any kind of ad hoc uh, analysis. So going back to my truck example again, at any given point in time, I would like to understand what is the cost of the asset today? It's been depreciating with time, but can I know today if I want to sell this truck, what is the value that I can expect out of this asset? So those are very common uh, business scenarios. Can I reconcile general ledger with fixed assets? Now, reconciliation of general ledger with subledger is something that users do at the end of every period. So it's a real handy tool at the time of period closure if users can really understand, okay, my GL is showing me X dollars, can I really understand what assets or what transactions in my asset system made up that number? So at the end of this activity, users will be able to tell that, okay, for sure the accounts are matching and I know that the period closure has occurred correctly. How many projects related assets were added in my system? Projects is a module which integrates very tightly with fixed assets. Let's say I'm doing a capital project and the expenses keep coming over to assets and once I capitalize my asset in my asset system, that's when the asset really gets created and it can tell me that, okay, I've created an asset for say $1,000 and this $1,000 is because of this project and probably to the level of this task in a particular project. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get started with my demo where I'll show you different reports and metrics we've built which answers these specific questions. So what you see on the top are the, what we call the prompts. Prompts are nothing but the dimensions which you can use to slice and dice your data. So just take the first set of prompts. We are talking about some time period prompts. So when I'm analyzing my asset information, I want to analyze this information for a particular year or for a particular period. All I do is just go and select a particular prompt value. It filters your asset information for the prompt that you've selected. Okay, let's talk about the overview page where we have reports which gives you the information at a summary level. I just want to look at my system or the asset tracking system in my company. At a big picture, what was the total cost of additions? Or what was the total uh, GL balance for a particular period? Let's look at the first report, for example. Fixed asset cost by category. 
categories are nothing but the general ledger categories what I've defined in my company. So what we're saying is for a particular period, here are your fixed asset costs by different GL categories in your company. If I have a category called additions, that means all the additions that occurred in my fixed asset system was moved to general ledger. And in general ledger, I have a category called additions, which is showing me a balance of about 27 million. Now, I want to understand, can I really look at the asset transactions that are sitting behind this number? If that is what you want, you just hit on the categories and it gets you to the next detailed report, which shows you the information at an asset level. So we started from general ledger, we've landed up in fixed assets at the transaction level. And the information we are showing in asset transaction level is basic asset information like what's the asset number, the description, what kind of an asset is that. We even show you the information about the AP invoice number and project details. So you start off from a module in general ledger, you go all the way to fixed assets and at the same time understand, can I relate this asset to an AP invoice or even a project? Let's go back to the overview page and look at some other GL related information. So we have another report called the top five fixed uh, asset account balances. So this is a, a typical report users can use in their reconciliation process. This tells me that these are the different fixed asset related accounts in my company. For example, there's an account called buildings where I track all the assets, all the buildings which are tracked as assets. And the report tells me that here's your account balance for a particular period. If I try to understand the details of that, it takes me to a GL detail report where this gives me the information at a GL journal level. So by using the first two reports, users can very well start from a general ledger uh, module and then understand the details behind an account balance or a category. We have a report called asset additions and adjustments. So this report gives me a breakdown of the total additions and adjustments that have occurred in my company by every period. The period in this case is by week. It could be month or quarter, whatever is in the business. The same report is shown in the form of a bar graph here. So what I'm seeing is in a particular week called 2611, my total value of additions and adjustments is about 12 million. And I want to understand the details behind that number. So when I get into the details, the first set of details is more from a project's point of view. So you start off with an addition number of X million. The next screen tells you that here are the different projects that your company is doing. And because of these projects, you had to do an addition worth 12 million. Now let me give another uh, real life example. Let's say construction of building is recognized as a project in my company. And in the process of doing that project, I have to do, say, interiors. I have to do painting. So these are different tasks that go into the project. Now, in the process of painting, let's say if I've procured some assets. So I want to understand, can I get an asset information at the level of the task detail? If that is what you're looking for, this report helps you exactly get that information. So we started off with an asset addition number. We came to a project from a project we are talking about the task details here. So uh, retirement is nothing but for whatever reason you say that, okay, this asset is no longer fit to be used. I'm going to either write it off or sell it off or whatever. Basically from my system point of view, I don't recognize this as a valuable asset. So the report gives you a breakdown or breakdown of the cost retired by different periods. So in week one, I've depreciated, uh, I'm sorry, I've retired assets worth over a million dollars and so on and so forth in the other periods. Let me take a particular week called week eight, where I'm showing a number of $10,000 as the retirement cost and understand what were the real uh, activities that uh, went in that week. So the retirement details report gives me basic retirement information, like this was your asset, this is the asset description, this was the cost retired, this is the unit retired, and what was the net book value retired. So these metrics are really helpful in understanding, okay, am I really depreciating, a, I'm sorry, am I really retiring a lot of assets? Or if I'm really retiring a lot of assets, what are the different costs at which I'm retiring each of my assets? So that is the level of information that you can expect uh, from doing the retirement analysis. 
Uh, sure, you should be able to. So what's going to happen in case of depreciation is your total cost that you've been depreciating will be able to will be able to tie to an asset. For example, if you have say X dollar as the total depreciation in your company, we should be able to relate that to an asset in terms of okay, here were the assets that really cost the depreciation number, and assets will be tied to projects. So if you really want to understand depreciation by project, that should be able to we should be able to do that. So the standard way of creating group assets, let's say whatever Oracle Business Suite lets you do that. So that is supported, but we've seen in most cases that group assets is something that gets customized to some extent in every installation or in every project. So the standard out-of-the-box functionality is supported by fixed asset analytics, but if you have any specific customizations that are done regarding your group assets, we need to look at that on a case-to-case -case basis. So the way it goes with group assets is you're recognizing that, okay, here's your parent group and here are your child assets that can be tied to that. So like you said, you can definitely not tie a depreciation amount to your group assets, but what you could do is you could really identify that, okay, here's my group asset, and you need not really relate all the metrics that apply to a standalone asset to your group asset. So in terms of the uh, analysis that you can do with a group asset is limited, but it's just that the product is capable of handling even group assets. Now let's say your requirement is to take a particular group asset and perform some analysis which may not hold good for a standalone asset or take an analysis which holds good for a standalone asset which cannot be applied to a group asset. That's a valid scenario. So we will probably have to take it up on a case-to-case -case basis to understand what is your requirement with group assets and how we can really uh, customize the product or use the existing functionality to support that requirement. Any other questions? Sure. What parts of OBIE does it require? Does your tool require? Uh, so basically, it uses some confirming dimensions like time, uh, I would say um, ledger to some extent. So I would say the basic financial analytics at least should be there so that the product is really able to integrate with financial analytics of the out of the box product. So, um, and let's say if you have some project, uh, let's say the company is into projects, and if you really want to tie this back to the projects in your company, then you probably need to have some kind of uh, project uh, analytics implemented. All right, thank you so much. Thanks for your time. The key takeaway for audience members from my session today was how can they really increase the efficiency of asset tracking in their system by using our fixed asset analytics product? because it really boils down to, can I really cut down on my expenditure? Can I really increase my revenue by managing my assets better? I also gave a demo of the other reports and metrics that we've built, uh, just to give a feel of what the product can offer and how customers can uh, increase the efficiency of their asset tracking system by using our product.